Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 225. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the Dow Jones 30 companies and the changes that they've made in the last 20 years. You're going to learn why the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a pretty meaningless indicator of growth. Sorry to say, but true. Well, this really started bugging me when it came up on the Money Tree Investing podcast that the Dow wasn't really the best indicator to follow. I got into a bit of a debate with my colleague, Doug, and we talked about whether the Dow was really a meaningful indicator. And the more I started to think about it, the more I started to research. And the more I started to research, the more I really became convinced that the Dow is more of a marketing tool than anything else. And maybe you'll agree with me by the end of this podcast, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average started out 100 years ago as a way to look at 30 companies and compare their price movements over time. And by comparing those price movements, the idea was that you'd be able to see the growth and measure the growth of these companies over the years. And while that's true, what you're not being told is that over time, almost all of the Dow Jones Industrial Average companies have changed. By that, I mean there's really only one original company to the Dow. Can you guess what it is? It's General Electric. General Electric is the only company that started out in the Dow 100 years ago and is still in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Since that time, we have changed companies many times. This can be from consolidation, it can be from bankruptcy, it can be from many different things. Takeovers, of course, but what happens is that the companies within the Dow do change fairly regularly. I mentioned on an earlier podcast that I remember back in 1999, one of the criticisms of the Dow was that it didn't have any technology companies. And we were right in the midst of the technology bubble and the internet boom. And so for the Dow not to have any tech companies, well, it was sort of saying it was really out of touch with what was going on. In 1999, the Dow hit 10,000, a new all-time high. And now we're 18 years later hitting 20,000, a doubling, which means we can calculate what the percentage rate of return was from that time that it doubled. As I mentioned in another podcast, when you have a doubling, you can use the rule of 72. That means that if you went from 10,000 to 20,000 in 18 years, you can divide 18 into the number 72 and come up with the annualized rate of return, which is a 4% rate of return. So we know that the Dow, in its doubling in the last 18 years, has averaged a 4% return. Okay, well, what is that really telling us? Are the companies in the Dow the same? I've mentioned that it changed a lot from 100 years ago, but how much has it changed in the last 20 years? That is the question that started to bother me and I started to do some research on. How many companies are actually the same today in the Dow as they were 20 years ago? Because if they're not the same, then we're not really comparing apples to apples. So for example, if you go to the grocery store and you pick out 30 different cans of food, let's say you pick out a can of olives, a can of soup, some green beans, some peaches, you have 30 different cans of food. You take those 30 cans and you add up what is the price of all 30 of those cans? And that gives you a number. 
what if 20 years later I go back to the store, but this time, instead of the same 30 cans, I change 10 of those cans to 10 different cans, and I keep 20 that I had from before. Now, if I add up the price and compare the price of those 20 cans with 10 new cans to the original 30 cans, what is that number telling me? Are those numbers going to bear any relationship to one another? Well, they do have some relationship to one another because 66% of the cans are the same. 20 out of 30 of the cans are the same, or 66%. That is what the Dow Jones Industrial Average is like. Only 66% are the same companies because we have only 20 companies of the Dow from 20 years ago that are the same. So in 1997, we had 30 companies. In 2017, only 20 of those companies are the same and 10 are different companies. Well, what happened to those 10 companies, and what were those 10 companies that are no longer there from 20 years ago? Well, we've lost companies like Sears, AT&T, Eastman Kodak, General Motors, Goodyear, Hewlett Packard, International Paper, Philip Morris, Union Carbide, and Allied Signal. So when the media gets on the news and says, rah, rah, 20,000 Dow, what a huge accomplishment. What are they really saying? They're really only saying, well, 20 of the 30 companies from 20 years ago have done great and have grown. And there's 10 new ones. And there's really only 66% overlap between that Dow 10,000 and Dow 20,000. So does it really mean anything, Dow 20,000? Well, not really. It just means that two-thirds of the companies have increased in value. That's all you can really presume from that. So here's what I recommend. Use the S&P 500 as your indicator, your index of choice. It, of course, is going to change companies too, and companies will come and go within the S&P 500, but at least you're covering 65% of all the companies in the stock market. So it's giving you some reference point of all of the companies out there. Professional money managers are also paid on the S&P 500. They're paid to outperform it. They take the S&P 500 index, and if they make a return higher than that index, then they're paid big bonuses for that. And if they don't meet what the S&P's performance is, then they're penalized for that. So the professional money managers are using the S&P 500. We should be using the S&P 500 and looking at that and see how the S&P has done over time, not the Dow. I want you to be savvy, and I don't want you to be fooled by marketing ploys and hoopla and hats being worn and confetti being thrown on the New York Stock Exchange because of some big supposed celebration for some big milestone that really doesn't exist. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.